Hello fellow heroes and welcome back to today's titan build which is going to be similar but different to the last one we did before. One thing I noticed with using stasis is how powerful it is with shutting down everything in this path and I mean everything. The void, solar and soon arc 3.0 has shown some interesting feats that make survival on any level good for those that want to play a multitude of build routes. But stasis now is just plainly powerful to its core so I want to expand on this further and show you why you should still be considering stasis in all content. Icefall Mantle and Glaze with a high focus on defense can turn you into a tank and not by traditional standards. Oh no, I mean an actual M1 Abram tank with all the defensive firepower that millions of bucks can get you. I am joking of course, but the tank and firepower aspect is quite true, so let me show you. But you know who else can get your tank worth millions of dollars? This channel right here so if you enjoyed the content then please leave a like a sub and turn on your notification for more content like this in the future as it would really help out so to start we'll be using the behemoth subclass combined with the iceful mantle for an all-out overshield stasis titan tank build it's similar to our horfus build we'll be training the extra user glaciers for more defense while on the go and we'll slowly creep our way towards the combatants without much damage occurring now, how you activate your ice falls will vary on the scenario and difficulty of the mode you're in, as within the higher tier content, you don't want to activate them in the middle of the open area. I'll show you what I mean via the clips, but you'll see how best to use the exotic for extra defense and using it to act as a second wind based ability. So let's start with the basics first. For my aspects, I have Diamond Lance, which will allow me to throw an Ice Lance at targets, which can freeze them on impact. I then have Totonic Harvest, which creates stasis shards from glaciers or frozen combatants that get destroyed. This will give me melee energy, but also other energy as well when combined with elemental shards. For fragments, we then have Whispers of Shards, which will boost our grenade regen for a short period, Whispers of Fissures, which will increase the style and damage of our shadow stasis, Whispers of Rhyme, which will grant us a small amount of overshield from shards collected, Whispers of Chain, which will grant us a 25% damage reduction while near stasis crystals or frozen targets. And lastly, Whispers of Conduction, which allows Stasis Shards to track to you. From here, our stats will be 100 Resilience, 100 Discipline, and 50 Intellect. Basically, a very similar setup that we did last time with little change given this time round. For mods, we have Elemental Shards for turning Stasis Shards into Wells, Form to Wisdom for a plus 50 Intellect, Battle for Wealth for creating 2 Wells, although this is kind of pointless for the setup, so swap it out for Elemental Armors instead, Reactive Pulse for an Overshield, and the ability to produce small blasts that damages anyone near us, and elemental charge for turning walls into charge with light. Basically, a copy paste of the Horfer setup, but this time we'll be relying on maximizing defense so that we can survive whatever hits are chucked at us. This may seem like an overkill at first since a glaive with near max shields is enough, but in the case of GMs, you want as much defense as possible no matter what you're up against. This here will reassure you so that if you do get hit by a sniper shot, for example, Instead of it outright killing you, you instead have a multitude of ways of surviving it. Mainly though, is there to make sure you can tank as much things as possible even when you have your guard down. So weapons, we have the following. We have Syncopation 53 with Outlaw and Headstone, which is a perfect role in terms of versatility and effectiveness I get back to back kills. I have updated the current role to fit in with Headstone so that we can reload faster and it feels like this is the role that everyone should be aiming for. It's nice and simple to use, and great for ranking fire combatants at higher difficulties. Still, don't let this be the only choice to use as purchase D, and the new purpose can get headstone as well. In fact, new purpose is the best one you'll want to farm for, as you can get adaptive munitions and Vorpal on it, which is a huge win in terms of endgame function. For secondary, we have the Enigma with Impulse Amplifier and Unstoppable Force. And if you're looking at a place to start with Glaze for in general, then this Glaze is the one you want to get. If you do the Witch Queen campaign, you'll get the following weapon, which at first doesn't have great perk to choose from. But from living it up over time, will net you with the following roles and this is what you want to truly aim for. Auxiliary Reserves will be increasing your shield duration for longer. Impulse will make your shots fire faster and Unstoppable Force will grant you a 30% damage increasement while blocking the incoming damage. With how this build is playing out, you'll be hitting hard and absorbing big damage like it's nothing. However, you can change this up with any other glaive of your choice as long as you have some of the following shown. For Heavy, we have the Galahorn, which is just a pure power to use against any boss you face. Now, this slot here can be down to you as this will vary from game mode to game mode, so nothing specific is needed here. 
For stats, we will be covering resilience, discipline and perhaps intellect as well, depending on how often you plan to use your super. As Iceform Mantle relies on class ability energy to achieve its goal, it will mean your resilience stat will need to be fairly high up, so 100 is ideal to go for and should be easy to get for some. Of course, if you're looking at this as someone who doesn't use tights as much, then this will be off-putting, so go for 70 to 80 instead as it will be still fast, but not at the rate of 100 resilience. You'll then want to aim for 100 in discipline and this will help with speeding up how quickly you can get your dust field and glacial grenades out again, and this is quite a big one as this will help with closing the gap and catching a large group of combatants out in one go. There isn't a specific mod to use to increase this further, as everything here should be achievable if you are already far into endgame with endgame gear. Of course, I would say though, if you can get a demolitions roll, Nezarak's Whisper, with Vorpal War or Unstoppable Force, then you can reduce your discipline stat to at least 70 at best. Your last stat to focus on is the intellect, and to be honest, this would depend on how often you plan to use your super. Considering procking from the wisdom is fairly easy to do, I would say getting your stat to 40 to 50 is all you need to do. You can of course increase this further, but it would mean that your frontal wisdom mod is made useless if plus 50 to it is going to waste. You can of course swap the mod out for something like frontal might or element of light instead, but that's down to you. All we have left now is stasis siphon for creating orbs of power via stasis weapons, glaive ammo finder for more glaive ammo, invigoration for faster melee cooldown when collecting an orb of power, rocket scavenger mod for more rocket reserves, solar formation for increased ignition damage, and revitalizing blasts, where stunning a champion will cause them to ignite. Now as we have covered the main topics of the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head we have resilience, stasis siphon, glaive ammo finder and element of shards mod, arm we have discipline and the wisdom mod, chest we have discipline, thermal shot plating, because of dampener and battle for well mod, leg we have minor resilience, rocket launcher scavenger, invigoration and reactive pulse mod, mark we have minor discipline, Vitalizing Blast, Sort of Formation, and Element of Charge mod. If you're new to Endgame and want a simple method of staying alive and also shutting things down with ease, then look no further to this setup. Not a lot of people give Ice Form Mantles a try, even though secretly it's top tier. And I'm talking you get a shield which lasts 20 seconds and grants you a 100 HP over shield with a 62.5% damage resist in PvE. Although the trade-off is you can't run and you slow walk, that's fine when you combine this with a glaive as the lunge attack can make you move faster briefly and the shield ability will allow you to absorb incoming attacks even at a snail's pace. How you plan to use your class ability can vary as most times you're not to use it if you're in a scenario with no shields and cover. I tend to activate it the moment I'm in a hard encounter where we need to clear a room out before proceeding such as the tank room on proven grounds. With little cover available in that section, I can't use just my glaive to blow everything at once, so adding on my overshield and being careful will help prevent me from getting one shot by the tank, champions and snipers. If I had to compare, I would say this build is better to use if a map you are on has cover available and you can utilise your glaive to its fullest advantage. Once you are in your hardened state, you can become near impossible to kill at times, unless you do something stupid. Comparing this to the whole force build, the latter offers users fastest ways of getting your super up and ready and using your glaciers created to your own advantage. Both builds are great and both can offer you room to deal with GMs of any kind and give you that extra lifeline when things go bad. If this is something you want and you enjoy Iceform Mantles for what it is, then I would recommend you use the exotic to its fullest with glaives, as it can be a powerhouse in the right hand. For new players though, I recommend you give the Hawthorne Z build a try instead. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.